Hi, I'm Chris Mueller, and this is your Gospel Update. Are you a disciple or just in the crowd? In Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, we have the beginning on the Sermon on the Mount. And it says, a large crowd of people had come to see Jesus. Now, we know from other parts of the gospel that the crowds that follow Jesus could get upwards of 10,000 people. Now, I know, your Bible has a heading that says the feeding of the 5,000, but read the section. It says 5,000 not counting the women and the children. Add the kids and the ladies and we're talking 10 to 12,000 people, easy. Now to put that in perspective, the occupancy of San Diego State's Viejas Arena is about 13,000 people. So just for a second, picture that. Picture Jesus standing in center court on the middle of the basketball arena, preaching to a capacity crowd with no microphone. There's no way that they could all hear everything he was saying. You know, I bet money there were people in the back talking, and truthfully, a lot of the people may not even have been trying to hear him anyway. At the end of chapter 4, right before this, it says, He went about all of Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every infirmity among the people. So his fame spread throughout all of Syria and great crowds followed him. See, most of the people were there to see a celebrity. Jesus did incredible things and people wanted to see that. Remember, there's no TV, no books, no radio. If you wanted to see Jesus, the famous healer, then you had to pick up and go to him. They wanted to see him do something incredible. The people sitting close, well, they probably could hear him. But the people on the edges, they probably didn't. In scripture, it says that Jesus sat down and his disciples came to him. Did you get that? The students, they got close. The disciples got to a place where they could listen. They were there for the teaching. Now, when Jesus begins teaching, it goes like this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they'll be comforted. Blessed are they who are meek, for they'll inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. By today's standards, it's not a great talk. Think about it. No jokes, no self-deprecating comments, no story from his life used as a colorful illustration. Jesus just launches in and he doesn't even really go into detail. He does not connect the dots at all. It's almost like he wants us to have to sit with it and pray on it to figure out what he's talking about. Oh wait, that might be what he wants. You know what? The crowds probably left the Sermon on the Mount a little disappointed. All Jesus did was talk. But the disciples, well, we know that their life was changed. The thing is, maybe God isn't as concerned with entertaining us as we are concerned with being entertained. Maybe God wants us to be challenged more than he wants us to be comforted. Maybe God wants to talk to the people who want to listen. The teaching of the Beatitudes are revolutionary. Jesus turns the accepted order on its head, but before you can hear it, you have to ask yourself. Do I want to hear what God has to say? Or am I looking for a show? Am I straining to hear the voice of the Lord? Am I pushing through the crowd to be near Him? Or am I sitting in the back, waiting to be entertained? A good gauge is to look at the way you're coming to Mass. Are you expecting to be taught something challenging? Are you ready to fight to find meaning in what you hear? Or are you sitting in the pew with an entertain me attitude? Are you a disciple? Or are you just part of the crowd?